In this video we'll be looking at another method of integration that we particularly apply for usually for integration of products of functions. Now often we need to integrate functions that are products that don't actually suit the substitution method and when that's the case sometimes we can solve the problem by using what's essentially a reverse of the product rule of differentiation. So we're going to look at a couple of specific cases. One of them is where the factors in the integrand get simpler via differentiation. So what I mean by that is something like a polynomial. So if you think about uh, differentiating x, when you differentiate x you get 1, and 1 is a simpler thing to deal with, with x than x. Similarly x squared goes to something like 2x, a lower power of x, uh, and x cubed would go to 3x squared. It's a simpler power of x, so these things are sometimes useful in terms of integrating by parts. Uh, when Another one is when we differentiate things and the function cycle, so something like a sine goes to a cos, goes back to a sine. Functions that cycle in that way in differentiation, they're often the kind of thing that you can integrate using the parts method. Now basically this integration by parts method works by identifying problems that look like this. So we'll have something that looks like on the left hand side a product of a function and another function and if we can pick out which one's u and which one's v dash figure out then what u dash and what v are and we can use the right hand side of this rule to give us the result for our integral and that's called integration by parts. So the method is pretty much summarized here uh, for a single run of integration by parts and basically it goes like this first thing you do is identify the factors of the integrand which one's going to be u and which one's going to be v dashed according to this. Now I say usually, it doesn't always work this way but the good thing is you can always just swap them if it doesn't help. So the first thing to do would be to set the one that's easy to integrate to be v dash and the one that gets simpler when you differentiate it to be u. Find v by integrating v dash and find u dash by differentiating u and then sub them into the rule to give you the result then what you'll usually have to do is figure out what this integral on the right is and that'll give you your final result. So let's check it out with this pretty much the standard first integration by parts example you ever see. Now what I see when I look at the integrand there I've got x and e to the x are the factors of the integrand. x I know when I differentiate it gives me 1. e to the x differentiates to itself so that's no simpler. Uh, but it is easy to integrate, so that looks like a, a good first choice will be to try letting u equal x and v dash be e to the x. So then what I'm going to find is u dash, by differentiating I get 1, and v, by integrating e to the x, is e to the x. I know it's plus c, I'm not going to worry about it here, we'll generate a plus c as we go through the problem, so we'll, we'll pick that up later. So then, what we're going to say is the integral of x, e to the x, dx. It's going to be, what did that rule say? It says u times v. So we need u is x and v is e to the x, so it's x e to the x. And then it's take away an integral, let's just remember, integral of v u dash. That's the integral of v and u dash is 1, so that's 1 times e to the x dx. Just e to the x dx. So we leave the first bit, and then we've got minus the integral of e to the x, which is just e to the x, so minus e to the x, and here I'll put in my plus c, just to finish off the problem. So that's our integration by parts there. Now if you think about it, if you'd have started this off from the beginning, there's no other method that we know about at the moment that would allow you to integrate that sort of function. You couldn't do a substitution, we don't have a rule, so we're basically left with this new method that we've got to apply. So that's our, our first example of it. Now, another a bit of an extension to this is sometimes just doing the rule one time, so doing an integration by parts here, a u and a v dash, getting u dash and v, applying the rule one time gave us the result. That's not always the case. Sometimes it won't work. If we'd have had a higher degree polynomial, so let's say we had an x squared in this problem, an x squared up here, we'd have found that x squared would have differentiated to 2x and we'd have got an integral on the right hand side here which we'd still have to do integration by parts again and so we'd have to apply it twice before we got our final result so sometimes you have to 
apply it more than once. Imagine if it was x cubed, you'd have to do it three times, and so on. With trig and exponential functions in your products, uh, the same thing happens. You don't always get straight to the result by one working through of the rule. So it gets a little bit messy, but the important thing is keep your working clear, and keep your scribbles out of the way to the side, so you've got messy working off to the edge, and you should be okay just applying the rule more than once. So let's have a look at one example where that's exactly what happens. So I want to integrate e to the x multiplied by cos of x, and it's a definite integral as well, but we'll deal with that last. So what we're going to do here is we're going to still got to try to figure out what's u dash and or what's u and v dash, and then we're going to go through with the rule. So here the functions in our product are e to the x and cos x. Now neither of these actually get any simpler when you differentiate them. e to the x differentiates to e to the x, and cos x differentiates to minus sine x, so they don't actually get any different. They're still the same sort of difficulty. But what I'm going to do is try it out anyway. So I'm going to start off by saying let u equal e to the x, and then v dash, so that will be cos x. And that means then that u dash will be e to the x again, and v, the integral of cos is sine, so we've got sine x, and let's see what happens. We'll have the integral from 0 to pi of e to the x cos x dx equals, so it's u times v. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put square brackets around it, because I need to remember I've got to pull these limits of integration from our definite integral, and pull them through all the way. So I'm going to do that, e to the x sine x evaluated at 0 and pi. And then I've got minus the integral of u dash times v, so that's minus e to the x sine x dx. So, we're not finished, because we've got this integral, e to the x sine x, it's actually pretty much the same sort of problem we had to begin with. We've got an exponential, a sine, I don't have a rule, I have to do integration by parts on that as well. So let's see what that is. Now that I've shown you one go through it, why don't you pause for a second and have a go at that one yourself. Just try working on that integral and then we'll come back and do all the rest of this stuff later. So maybe pause for a second and try it out. Okay, so I'm just going to look at that integral on the right hand side first of all. Now what we've got is an e to the x sine x, so I'm going to let u again be e to the x, so I'll make it the same and I'll make the trig function the one I'm going to integrate. Keep it the same and it should follow through nicely u dash then is e to the x, v is minus cos of x, and we've just got to slot those in using integration by parts. I'm going to get e to the x, oh, it's going to be a minus e to the x, because the v is minus cos x, minus e to the x, cos x, from 0 to pi. Take away the integral of v times u dash, well there's a minus there, so that'll become a plus. e to the x, cos x, Okay, so again, I think, oh, I've got to do integration by parts. But, let's just look at that. That piece right there is actually the same as our original integral. Okay? So, this whole piece here on the right. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to call this i. i for integral. So, what I've now got is my original question. Oh, that's i as well. Okay, so let's call that i. This is going to make everything fit much better. So we've got i equals, then we've got this little bit here, e to the x sine x from 0 to pi, e to the x sine x from 0 to pi, and then I get take away, I'll take away the integral we've just figured out. So take away this whole thing. Take away minus e to the x cos x, from 0 to pi again, and take away i. Well, let's draw that in red too, so that we got the same colors going on. So take away i. They don't cancel, that's great, I can take that over. I'm actually going to have 2i, two lots of the thing I'm trying to figure out, is equal to these two square bracket pieces. So I've got e to the x sine x from 0 to pi, take away minus e to the x cos x from 0 to pi. So now really what we've already, only what we've got to do is evaluate these two square bracket pieces, 
and divide the result by 2 and we've got what i is. And remember, i is exactly what we're trying to figure out. So evaluate, divide by 2, and we've got our answer. So let's try doing that. So there we go. If I substitute pi into this first one, I get e to the pi sine pi. And then I take away what it is when x is 0, e to the 0 sine 0. Then I got minus. And then the same thing again. So we pop pi in for x. We got minus e to the pi cos pi. Pop 0 in for x. We got minus minus plus e to the 0 cos 0. Now remember, sine of pi is 0. And sine of 0 is also 0. So this whole term actually cancels out nothing. Cos of pi, that's equal to minus 1 and cos of 0 is equal to plus 1. So there's heaps of cancellation going on here. So we're going to get uh, 0 minus minus, so that's going to be plus. Oh, now it's going to be minus. So we get minus e to the pi and minus plus. So that's minus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. I should have done that too. Minus 1. Oh, and remember we got two of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our final result is i divide both sides by 2. We get 1 on 2 minus e to the pi minus 1. And that's our final result. So that is the evaluation of this integral right here, which I let be called i. I did one integration by parts, found that I still needed to do another, so I did that second integration by parts, popped the result back in, realized that part of it was just the thing I was trying to figure out, I, did a little rearranging, did some evaluating, and then divided by 2 to get my final result. So that's probably one of the more complicated ones you'll get in integration by parts. But really, it's just a matter of remembering that you're just doing it twice, and you just got to keep track of things as you go through. The application of the method, it's pretty much the same. Okay, so where to now? Basically, you can check out in the text, section 5.2 and other, other texts you can check out any section on integration by parts. Uh, you can have a look at some of the exercises from the worksheet and also from the text and maybe look into how the method is developed. Um, why does that have anything to do with the product rule of differentiation? So check that out and have a think about it. You can try integrating and rearranging the product rule and you should be able to get back to this rule for integration. Anyway, that's it for this section.